This is episode 16 of Distro Delve Season 2, and in this episode we're going to be taking a look at the curious distribution that is Endless OS 3.7. Distro Delves is a video series where I review Linux distros while following a checklist which you can view and submit new distros for review on GitHub. Endless OS is a fascinating and unique Linux distribution created by Endless Solutions, a company based out of San Francisco with three offices worldwide. Yep, they've got a large footprint. I've only ever read about Endless prior to this video, so the footage you'll see here is the first time I've actually used it. And let me tell you, I was totally impressed. Now the Endless OS installer is probably the simplest installer that I've ever seen. There's an optional live session, but the installer basically asks you what version of Endless OS you want, and if you're sure you want to reformat your disk. The Welcome app sets basically everything else up, and yes, this is basically the regular old GNOME Welcome app. There's also this lengthy Terms of Use doc. Remember that Endless is a company, so they kind of have to protect themselves with liabilities, so this isn't really a surprising thing. When you create an account, all you get is your name and the option to create a password. I'm not going to use a password here so that I can show you how Endless OS is different from most other distros you've probably used. So there's not really a desktop per se. Instead, you get the GNOME shell. Now we'll come back to this in just a minute, but first let's look at the system resource usage. Because of how Endless OS works, it's difficult to see really how much space a fresh install takes, but let's say it's between 8 gigabytes and 26 gigabytes. You'll see why the install is so big in just a moment. Free is telling us that one gigabyte of memory is being used, and in HTOP we can see the CPU is puttering along using actually kind of a lot of resources with 114 tasks and 212 threads. Okay, back to the desktop. This is it. It's GNOME Shell. There's not really any customization options because that's just not how Endless OS is built. Instead, the OS is pretty restrictive and set up to be used like right out of the box. I mean, you could technically get GNOME tweaks and start changing things, but that's not how the OS is meant to be used. About the only thing you can change is your profile pic, default apps, and uh, backgrounds of which the default background isn't great, but it does remind me of something I would see on a school computer. The backgrounds it does ship with are pretty nice, and there are lots to choose from. So Endless ships with a bunch of apps. Some are defaults, which you've all seen before, and some are special to Endless OS. The default apps are apps like uh, WhatsApp and YouTube, audio, video, and photo editors, and more. Apps open in full screen by default, which is a bit cumbersome for the video, but it makes sense for what this distro is trying to achieve. There's also several games pre-installed, all of them dealing with education or learning in some form. So those were the default apps, like the standard ones that you may have seen before. Now let's check out some of the special Endless OS apps. There's an app right here called Hack, which you'll have to wait till the end of the video to see what that's all about. Let's start with the Encyclopedia app. It is exactly what it sounds like. It's an encyclopedia, and yes, it's basically Wikipedia in an app. Why is this cool though? Because Endless OS is built to be used offline, so much of this content is stored on the local file system. And the presentation is quite a bit different too. The colors, typefaces, and the ability to share pages right built into the app. Now let's take a look at the Curiosity set of apps. There's an app that shows curated drawing tutorials. These seem to just be YouTube videos, but again, they are curated by the endless people, so this all should be available offline. There's not a ton here yet, but they're adding new stuff all the time, which is pretty cool. And speaking of tutorials, there's also an app for Blender tutorials as well as Blender itself. And before you say, well, why is this cool? I can just download Blender and find some tutorials online. That's not the point. All of this stuff comes pre-installed and curated for the user, which is incredibly helpful for kids or users brand new to computers or even Linux. Here's another similar app called Science Snacks, which is basically a bunch of really simple and fun experience, again, mostly geared towards kids. And very similar to the Encyclopedia app itself, there are apps for specific topics like travel, animals, cooking, and more. I love this so much because it reminds me a hell of a lot of Encarta Kids from way back in the day. And the key word in all of this that I keep using is curated. Kids don't always know if something is interesting until somebody shows them or tells them about it. In apps like these, you've got a list of interesting locations or animals, and a kid is like, hey, what's this? What's that? And since these are all contextual apps, you don't have to worry about a kid or a student reading about Siamese cats on Wikipedia and then suddenly finding links to things other than just cats. There are a few pre-installed Linux games, and the one that I found the most interesting was Numpty, which is, oh my god, fun. 
I mean, just look at it. This game is probably available in your distro's repos right now, and you probably haven't even played it. And speaking of games, there's this section called Games to Hack. I'm gonna leave this for the outro segment because there's so much cool stuff to cover here, it really deserves like a time slot of its own. And then here's a section called Learn to Code. Some of these apps are actually available on Raspbian, like for Raspberry Pi, and they're the functional the same. Fun little programs for people to understand the fundamentals of programming. They're not trying to teach you programming from start to finish. It's just like kind of the trying to get the fundamentals out there. Again, mostly geared towards kids, but it's still good stuff. So what if you want to install some more apps? Well, the interesting thing about Endless is that the entire OS is based around flat packs. That's why a root password isn't needed for anything. Freaking brilliant design. Everything that can be installed is installed as a flat pack. Updates are managed by the OS and are automatically downloaded and can be automatically installed if you want. Apt is available from the terminal, but the repos are all empty, so you're not going to be installing anything with it. I'm using it here to show that the NVIDIA drivers are pre-installed and they're version 430. So let's get back to the checklist test, starting with external device support. I was able to mount and unmount my USB devices without any issues at all, so that's good. All of the archive file formats are supported, but everything opens as a full screen window, which is fine for the OS, but annoying for this review. The audio files opened okay, but the AC3 file opened in videos, which was odd. All of the others opened in Rhythmbox. Video playback was unfortunately just bad. VLC isn't installed by default. There is a link to install it on the like homepage area, but it's not installed by default. So when you open pretty much any video file, good old GNOME Videos is there to tell you that it can't handle it and it actually recommends to install VLC. Which is fine, but installing VLC doesn't change the default player, so you still have to deal with GNOME Videos until you manually switch it over. Even then, the playback wasn't great. The WebM file in particular was pretty bad, which is actually kind of odd because WebM and VP8, VP9 are open standards, so I have no idea why the playback would be bad. Now I wasn't expecting much in the way of third-party app support besides, you know, Flatpak, but much to my surprise, Etcher opened just fine. I couldn't use it, obviously, but it was there. But the Caden Live app image didn't open. That's a first in the series. I installed the OBS Flatpak and it worked, but it looks like NVENC support wasn't like configured or installed. And since you can't really tinker with stuff like drivers and stuff on Endless OS, there's, I guess, no support for NVENC here. This is probably a bug because there's no real reason not to support it. And in the way of network sharing, there's no Samba config from a file browser, but GNOME does offer DLNA file sharing. Unfortunately, it didn't work. The share wasn't discovered from other machines in my house, and I couldn't even access it locally, which is weird. And another first for the series, I wasn't able to SSH from the file browser to my Linux workstation behind me. I was able to do it using the terminal, but not the file browser. Very odd. I was able to access my Windows machine using SMB and the IP though. Printer support was weird. Look, no printers. But if I authenticate, poof, there it is. Not sure what the hell that was about. And Bluetooth support was perfect. My DualShock 4 controller paired and connected without any issue. Shame I couldn't test it with anything though. I installed Steam, but since everything is installed as a flat pack, I couldn't access the games I have installed on the external SSD. And there's not a ton of room on the internal SSD, so I couldn't install a bunch of games locally either. I installed Mad Max and set it up for Vulkan, but unfortunately, uh, Vulkan support isn't there. I couldn't even get Mad Max to run at all, actually. I tried the normal branch and just refused to launch. I have no idea why. But since Endless OS is geared towards learning anyways, I played some Gary's Mod and attached balloons to everything I could find here in the restaurant. There's no benchmarks or anything, but the frame rates were just fine. Same, I played some Besiege and it was perfect. No reason why you can't play games like this on the system. Still not sure what was up with Mad Max, but whatever. And just for funsies, I went ahead and ran Geekbench for the CPU stuff. The multi-core performance seemed like weirdly low, but the single core performance was right on par with all of the other distros we've looked at. So now that we're at the end of the checklist, I have a lot to say about Endless OS. The footage you'll see here is of that game or program hack that I talked about, and also a lot of games from Endless OS themselves. I think they call themselves Endless Studios or something. Pretty awesome that they're making games for their distro. What other distro does that? And yeah, these are some fantastic and high quality educational games. Eh, they're Unity, but still, these are freaking solid. The whole OS feels like what MECC wanted to do for kids in the 90s. 
You've all played Oregon Trail, right? Well, how about Gizmos and Gadgets or any other Super Solvers game? I played a lot of Super Solvers games as a kid and they all were so incredibly enchanting with how creative, but at the same time education driven that they were, if that makes sense. Same thing with programs like Encarta Kids, like it seems so simple, but it was an encyclopedia that was geared towards kids and easily accessible and all that. They just don't make learning software like that anymore. The programs that you do find are usually on iOS or Android and they're just like bad. I feel like Endless has gone back to basics here with less glamour and less shine and more just like education. Like they're not trying to hide the fact that it's education, it's just built into the game. Number Munchers was another game that I played as a kid. It's so simple, but it was fun. I was excited in grade school when we went to the computer lab and that was the game that they were telling us to play. And here's another game by Endless that is remarkably similar. It's like the same formula, but remixed for kids in 2020. Endless OS is probably not the distro for regular Linux users and especially not power users, but Endless is the perfect OS for kids. Is it only for kids though? Eh, no, not really. It could be used as a very simple desktop for like business users as well. If all you needed to do was some word processing or some internet related stuff, Endless could do that no problem. In that way, Endless OS competes directly with Chrome OS. It's not an OS that you would seek out to use, but it is an OS you might encourage others to use. We did run into a few bugs here and there, and they're mostly edge cases minus the video playback thing, and it doesn't really hinder the usability of Endless OS. The stuff that Endless is doing is what really gets me excited about the future of Linux. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Distro Delves. If you want to contribute to the series and submit a new distro for review or update the script or something, hop on over to the Distro Delves repo on GitHub and check it out. If you want to support me and the channel, you can become a patron and enjoy posts about behind the scenes stuff, history about this channel, and links to playlists with old and archived videos. I appreciate all your support. And thanks for watching.